Asheville, North Carolina. It's wonderful to have you with us this afternoon. And uh, we are anxious to hear what you want to say about your community. So are you ready for your presentation? Yes, yes ma'am. All right, let's get started. Thomasville, furniture. We were craftsmen, and the furniture made in Thomasville was sold around the world. I wouldn't even be surprised if some of you don't have our beautiful furniture in your very own home. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm Mayor Joe Bennett. When you uh, craft heirloom furniture, you take very much pride in it. And we are also very proud of it. We also built the world's largest chair, put it smack dab in the middle of Thomasville. Yeah. And then we had a celebration over it. And we call it Everybody's Day. And it's North Carolina's oldest festival. The things started to change in the 1980s. Much of our furniture was outsourced to Asia. Most of our textiles has, had already gone. Sure, Thomasville had diversified, but it just wasn't enough to make up for our loss. Today, sadly, 24% of our population lives in poverty. There were needs in our community, and a few years ago, we set out to do something about that. We went back to our roots of craftsmanship, but this time, we would be crafting community. To get things started, we need to sharpen our saw, get better at the things that we were already doing. One way was our Memorial Day event. For years, it had been a chance for us to do some flag waving and honor our vets, like Eddie, a Marine who fought in Vietnam. When I came home from Vietnam, it was not a good thing because <coughs> people did not respect us. We were mistreated. But when Thomasville began the Memorial Day celebration, that made all of us veterans feel good. That made us feel like heroes. Yes. The heroes that we knew we should have been treated as when we first came home. Right. That made us feel real good. But with U.S. service members losing their lives in Iraq and Afghanistan, a parade just didn't seem like enough. We're not a military town, but we are an American town. Yeah. We wanted the families of fallen soldiers from across our state to know that their loss is also our loss. So we began to honor them. We invite them to Thomasville to be our guests during the Memorial Day ceremony on the weekend. We also have a parade, a concert, and a memorial service to let them know that we are that we know that their sacrifice is remembered and that their loved ones killed in combat are our heroes. But Memorial Day is a single event. Thomasville wanted a more permanent way to honor our vets. I'm Kelly, I'm the city manager of Thomasville. We expanded our display in City Hall to include a permanent exhibit honoring those World War I vets from Thomasville. We also built 13 huge panels with over 700 pictures of our local veterans. Every day I see people come into City Hall to look at these photographs, to see the picture of a loved one, a family member, a friend who served in the military. These brave men and women went off to war and then came back to build our town, Thomasville. Yeah. And that legacy of building has been passed on in Thomasville. Two years ago, the Rotary Club decided to rebuild seven city playgrounds. I was the president at the time, and we applied for a global grant from Rotary International. But we didn't get it. But we also didn't give up. We started hammering out plans and raising $300,000, mostly from local foundations, businesses, and private citizens. Playgrounds are right up my alley. As wellness coordinator for the school system, I'm always looking for ways to keep kids active. High obesity is directly correlated with poverty, and many of our parks are in low-income areas. And although they're walking distance to every neighborhood in town, the playgrounds simply weren't being used. The equipment was unsafe, outdated, and well, just not fun. I'm on the Parks and Recreation staff, and while they worked in the community to raise funds and buy new equipment, our crews began turning their wrenches, dismantling the old playgrounds, and making way for our new ones. I'm a district commander, and in my district there was a park where people went to use drugs and alcohol. They were the only people that cared to go there. But since those renovations and community involvement, 
Not a single arrest has been made for those types of crimes. Almost 100% of the people I see there now are with their children at the playground. There's also been a 37% reduction in cost of service in the neighborhoods surrounding that park. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite playground is Memorial Park. I really love climbing on the jungle from a play with my little sister. Yeah. Hi, I'm Travis's mom. I used to never let him play at the playgrounds, but now I know he's safe and getting lots of fun exercise. Yeah. They added new line to the basketball court and baseball field. Now we know when the ball really goes out of bounds. And they added swings. We didn't have swings before. Swings are my favorite. Of the seven playgrounds in Thomasville, one of them is extra special. It's built to accommodate all children, particularly those with physical disabilities. Now kids there don't focus on their disabilities, they enjoy their abilities. Hi, uh, this is my son Michael. He has Angelman syndrome, and, uh, provides a host of different delays. Um, I'm a longtime Thomasville native. Uh, we recently bought, uh, uh, bought a house in Thomasville. Uh, Michael wants to say something. Um, just, a, just a block away was Dope Park. Um, used to be an eyesore in our town. It is not anymore. They've upfitted it with all this wonderful equipment, handicapped swings, um, a soft ground. Um, we're just overjoyed that Thomasville thought of kids like Michael when they upfitted their parks. When you get down to brass tacks, Thomasville is dedicated to taking care of its people. As a school counselor, I certainly know about students who struggle to fit in. With a growing displaced population, it's especially difficult for those students. But then came along Tracy Brinkley. When you know her history, she seems like the most unlikely person to be a part of this great movement. That's right. Tracy lost most of her eyesight in a bicycle accident over a decade ago. Now she's battling a life-threatening illness. But it doesn't slow her down. In November of 2010, Tracy was undergoing one of her medical treatments when a nurse on the unit read a newspaper article to her about how a city raised money for its local homeless shelter. She came home and called me, our pastor, and a school administrator. She said, I'll never forget her words. She said, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this, but I know God wants me to do something. Right. Tracy doesn't waste time. Within a week, she and others got together, and that something turned out to be Project Divine Interruption. With this poster project, they set a goal to raise $5,000 to help displaced students. Two years later, we raised $60,000 from more than 400 volunteers and donors. One of the fundraising projects is a bicycle ride, and incidentally, Tracy still rides with her best friend on a tandem bike. But they just don't understand. 100% uh, <laughs> of the money raised goes into a mission fund at our church. It's then allocated to a special school fund. It's a wonderful and unique collaboration. We want to make sure that displaced students get to school, and once there, they remain on a level playing field. Now you can look at students in the classroom, and you'll never guess which ones have been displaced. That's right. In Thomasville, one out of every 25 students is displaced. Project Divine Interruption has had a tremendous impact on academic performance and approved attendance. Some students literally make it to graduation because of this program. I'm one of those students. My parents had to move back to Mexico, and in November, I lost everything in a house fire. I mean everything. I had to move in with an aunt who lived in another school district. I was going to quit school and get a job. Project Divine Interruption didn't let that happen. They arranged transportation, gave me personal items, clothing, and all the school supplies I needed. On June 8th, I graduated, and I have plans for my future. <laughs> I'm Tracy, and needless to say, I'm most humbled by these very kind words. Project Divine Interruption did begin as a seed that God planted in my heart, and I honestly had no idea of the doors that would open for this ministry. Yet we have provided over 1,000 hygiene kits, haircuts, gas cards, grocery cards, school supplies, clothing, transportation back and forth to school. We even prepare and deliver Thanksgiving meals to all of our Project Divine Interruption families. I received one of them turkey dinners that fed my family for several days. It was a real blessing. Yes. Now, me, our family lost our home in the past year, and me and my three boys had lived with my mom, my nanny, and my aunt. Now we're on our own. Right. Mm -hmm. I love it when they give me extra food for my little brother. <laughs> you see, kids have no control over their circumstances. If there's one thing I've learned from my situation, there is no room for excuses. We don't have time to wait on government or grants. I don't have time. That's our measure of success. We get things done in Thomasville. 
We can sharpen our saw, we can level out playing fields, we can make plans and we can get down to brass tacks, but truly the most valuable tool in our toolbox is people. It's our people. Yes, right. mm -hmm. It's not just enough to build something bigger and better, because one person's loss is everybody's loss. One person's hunger is everybody's hunger. One kid's education, well that's everybody's future. That is the true spirit of community. Hope has an address, and it's Thomasville. Yeah, it's more. It's more than a parade of patriotism. It's a parade of compassion, because hand in hand, arm in arm, shoulder to shoulder. Thomasville helps everybody. Thomasville, thank you for such a great story and sharing uh, real heartfelt community projects. So I'm sure we have some questions. Ed, we'll start with you. Hi, everyone. Thank you again for your presentation. I did have a question about the um, awesome every day, everybody's day uh, celebration. Can you talk a little bit more about that? that well, what I'm curious about is you have your, your population essentially doubles during this celebration. Talk a little bit about that, please. I sure will. Um, it originally started in 1908 by the mayor at that time. Um, wasn't always, uh, it's been sporadic a little bit since then, but been going again strong since um, now for about 25, 26 years. So we call it everybody's day with the same name. Originally, it's a day for everybody to come to our community. We've, uh, it's, it's downtown street festival, common to, to many communities, arts, culture, um, entertainment. Um, but I, I, we think we bring, uh, we know we bring an audience from a large uh, region that we're in. Um, the highest police estimate we've ever had was 82,000 people. So. Thank you. Thank you. Christine, I believe you have a question. Thank you. Thank you, Thomasville. You, my goodness, you do all, you have all the tools for, for what the future um, is going to be. And, um, Project Divine Interruption, there's only one word for it, it is absolutely divine, it is inspirational, it is. and um, thank you, thank you. Um, something caught my eye in your application, um, however, which is your new collaboration called the Not-for-Profit Network, which is appearing to bring nonprofits together in order to leverage each other and collaborate with each other as opposed to duplicate services. That's a really tough thing to happen in the nonprofit sector. Can you talk a little bit about how that's going and what the inspiration was behind that? I'll, I'll, I'll talk to that just for a second because I helped put together, along with, uh, with Doug Croft, uh, the uh, not-for-profit net network, and it's just a collaboration of, I guess the, the best way to explain it is we, we got all the, as, as a community uh, volunteer, just got, uh, you get all the, as many nonprofits in one room as you can, and you say, raise your hand if you don't know everybody in this room, and every hand went up because they don't know everybody. You think you do, but you don't. And that's just part of the, the spark, is getting everybody on the same page, not duplicating, uh, the, not duplicating services and addressing the needs of the community. Did you want to address part of that too? No, no? okay, thank you. thank you. Mandy? Good afternoon. Um, again, um, great to see fellow North Carolinians in the room and, and congratulations on a great story. Um, one, of, um, one of the things that I'd like someone to expound on is, is your Thomasville on the Move program that's going on. And I really especially want to know, are there all different ages and backgrounds um, involved in that project? Yeah, absolutely. Thomasville on the Move was a collaborative effort um, between the schools, the hospital, the chamber, um, many community partners, our Y, Parks and Rec. Um, and it is something that encompasses the entire community. We do um, monthly challenges to make sure that people are active 30 minutes a day. Everyone needs to be active 30 minutes a day for good health. Um, and we do um, challenges with all the partners to see who can get the most people doing a walk or some other physical activity. Um, Corey um, Tobik with um, Parks and Rec has sort of taken that over and done a great job of bringing up and getting more and more people involved all the time. Corey, you have anything else you want to add? Are you talking about Piedmont Crossing? Um, basically what we're trying to do is have an incentive-based program that will get people to come out. We're averaging probably about 100 forms so far, a month maybe, um, even more with uh, basically a, a log sheet that you had to fill out. And it's just encouraging people to work out and be more active. We did it at the uh, retirement community and um, 
it's actually going really well. So people are getting involved with it. Yeah, thank I just want to clarify, we also we have a capital campaign that was called Thomas on the Move. So I'm make, making sure we, I know which Thomas on the Move talks about. They got the right thank one. You. <laughs> One of the comments, one of the findings that you point out is when compared with the full student body population, identified homeless students are maintaining comparable grade levels or numbers slightly higher in some instances. That it says to me that other people are getting involved like the family or after school, study groups or, or, or something else to support that foundation uh, and, push people, and push those students up. Um, in, in dealing with our um, displaced, our homeless populations, um, along with Project Divine Interruption, um, they have, we're focused on education. Um, it's helping those children get on academically and socially a level playing field with their counterparts who are not experiencing the same thing. And um, there are summer programs and um, tutoring programs after school um, that we have alongside of that that help those students to, um, to do better socially and academically so that they can be equal, or if not better, than the other students. Do you involve their family in that process? Yes, sir. Kurt, do you have a question? A question, maybe a comment. The, I applaud you for everything you're doing relative to the homeless uh, students. And in your, your application, um, you acknowledge something to the tune of 120. Um, this is not a problem that's unique to your city. This is a problem in, in a lot of metropolitan areas, including mine. Uh, we're seeing a, a growing number there. You're, you're probably doing more than at least any place that I've heard of to address this issue. It, but it's somewhat troubling in that, you know, I think it's a symptom of a much bigger issue. And I'm not sure I can get my hands around that bigger issue, but I wonder who takes dealing with the students.